what are the like i see you are working majorly on migration we are like kind not exactly migration majorly not on migration so i am working on the engagement part of the company so i handle all the engagement which happens through the mobile browser or web browsers so i work on this feature which is being interacting through the browsers basically the react part okay so technology wise you are working on uh, react yes so are you working on back end as well or only so no, not yet like i'm trying to get in the back end as well but they have a separate team and they don't allow very frequently to work on the back end code because it is very like they want to make it separate from all the other teams because any single mistake can cost the company a big amount of revenue okay so you are using react yes like uh, do you have hands on on javascript as well yeah like we we use typescript plus react here okay so we don't uh, do javascript uh, like we don't uh, write code in javascript on a daily basis but yeah i have understanding of javascript as well okay yeah so based on your understanding like why do you think people want to use react instead of directly using uh, javascript or any other framework okay so like if i'm telling about the framework which we are like any framework angular react or any other framework mm -hmm. this is much a ui ui interactive or i can say a ui rich frameworks in that we can get a lot of uh, modules or we, we can get a lot of customizable customizable options to make our components our web browser web components very um, interactive or um, like much better presentable okay so that is why we use react so the main reason we choose react over any other framework is that react is just like in the in react we have single single data flow so it will be easier for any uh, large scale application to debug if we have any issues okay that it's the main reason we use react here right now the team they have we have different teams one team is migrating our code like our, uh, old code which is written on php to next js and that team like any feature they release like that team any feature release they make sure that everything they make is on the next year's uh, server side rendering not on the react on not on the react okay but the uh, the things i'm working on in the company is majorly work on the like, react react side okay and uh, like okay suppose react has this one way data flow right yes but angular has two way data binding then is it isn't that good um so like when we have two way data binding the main problem with that is um to check the flow of the data so if i we have a lot of components which is like inner components it, it have a lot of hierarchical components so when we have two data uh, two way data uh, binding it will increase our dev efforts for debugging any issues okay that is the main uh, reason i can remember right now we use we prefer react over angular okay and it is like uh, the community is much wide of wider of react as compared to angular and uh, what about the performance uh, in react app versus the plain javascript app okay so performance wise so um like in javascript javascript as well the basic rules which we use to increase the performance of any application is same to reduce the major one is uh, we can reduce our javascripts um, files or we can like in react we can uh, try to minimize the states so it won't re-render on every run mm -hmm. then uh, reduces the image size or using a better format instead of uh, jpg try to png or avif or wbmp it, it will also increase the performance because it will load faster on on the browser apart from but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, what about lazy loading yeah so in, in react we have lazy loading as well so we can show the a critical component which is uh, important for the user first and then we can lazy load our components which is not that critical but it is important in some 
like in the down down the line for if the best example is for e-commerce uh, applications normally when we browse and think the first thing we saw is the uh, product photo product name and the price we don't need uh, the information of uh, who's the manufacturer when it is uh, no, manufactured build mm -hmm. on on the first page we can show all this data on, on the other part of the, like in in later part so okay. it will just uh, help us to show like with the help of laser loading we can show the components which is critical for a user okay not to load whole uh, application or not to load whole components which might uh, it contains okay so what are the drawbacks of using react uh drawback drawbacks of using react uh, okay so the main drawbacks which um i can state with react is the states are the main drawbacks like um not states the rendering of states so in small application they don't go for redux because in redux they have to like integrate the complete um third party um library in, in redux so they use local storage or mostly states so when anyone uses states in their application every time any state value changes it will re-enter that com component if it is not a pure component mm -hmm. so whenever a state uh, whenever a re-entering happen it will reduce the reduce uh, the performance of that uh, complete component so if if i'm rendering uh, a component multiple times in in few seconds it will just like in um, not it will be not a op optimal optimal way okay so that is the main challenge with react is uh, if we have a lot of states which is changing very frequently mm -hmm. then it will be a like um, browser uh, heavy or resource heavy uh, thing to like interact or to make to make any changes so like your site which you're working on shadi.com is very resource heavy right yes then why do you use react then ideally you shouldn't use it as your explanation okay so uh, like earlier they had uh, php like in, uh, they've written the, all the code in php then then react came then they migrated still some part of the code is still in PHP and they're migrating that code from PHP to like uh, not React right now, they're migrating that part to Next, but earlier everything uh, they have migrated to uh, React and now they're migrating from Next, uh, React to Next is it because it is a server side rendering, it's not a client side rendering. So it has a faster speed, it provides, it is a better SEO as well, it provides better SEO. So they're migrating from React to Next. So it's not uh, exactly they are using framework just because um, it is like uh, resource heavy. Mm -hmm. They are planning to like they are still migrating that uh, features or um, I can say the com application components to the next years as, as they are finding that that ne near the next framework is very fast as compared to the React modules. Okay. So in future, if something new comes in, which uh, is like stable and it has a very fast speed rather than next, they might move to that um, that framework as well. Okay. Which version of React do you use? 16, 17.2 exactly. That's a stable one we are using. Okay. So it has hooks, right? Yeah. So can you explain what is this hooks? Okay. So, um, Hooks are basically a functions which helps functional based component to access all the properties which a class component already have. Okay. So, uh, like let's suppose um, use state, use state is hook which we use to set a state of any component, basic initial state, or we can update it accordingly. Use effect is also a hook which we use uh, to mount our components when anyone first 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 time render that component and uh, we can change that if we prop some if we pass some props on that dependency array of use effect so if anything changes on on that um any uh, element of that uh, which is which we have passed on, on that array it will be auto it will be auto uh, rendered because use effect, effect rendered every every time when there's a change in, in the dependency array 
but, but the first mount is if we have to just mount our element we uh, declare our use effect and pass a empty array dependency array apart from that we have uh, use context as well so use context api we, we people use when like normally everything in react is that everything uh, here is a uh, top to bottom flow so parent there's child and there's a parent child grandchild so if i have multiple siblings of a parent it ha then from parent i can pass all the components or all the properties all the states to their multiple ch children but if i have some property on children and i want to pass it to that children's sibling it is not possible um, from context api so we use redux for that but like we have uh, context api as well to uh, reduce to reduce uh, prop array to not pass every uh, everything on 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 the child component we just pass like we have a parent and then child and then grandchildren we have set some values on parent component and we can directly access count with the help context api we can directly access on the grandchildren so use effect use state uh, on context api apart from that we have use memo use memo is also a hook which we use to memorize any uh, value of any function so sometimes it happens that we have a function or we have a we have a logic which is the calculation of that logic is very expensive because it use it might use some api or some backend uh, related backend expensive thing backend expensive api which might be paid so we re remember that data with the help of use memo and use it according a requirement other one is uh, use callback so it uh, also help us to memorize the whole function of the, of that uh, like memorize the whole function not to uh, like we don't have to rewrite that function again and again like if we are using any timer and in that timer we are calculating some minutes so we are calculating hours minutes days from some value it might be second from second we are calculating minutes hours or, or days so with the help of use callback we can just use that logic again and again without using like without um, writing that logic every time okay. apart from this this hook we have what else remain uh use ref as well so use ref is also a hook which we use to um i can say mm -hmm, to uh, find any element in the current dom okay. and uh, yeah like if i missed any um, hook uh, hook name you can just ask me i can explain you what okay. So we can create our custom hooks. Yes, we can. Okay. So have you created any custom hook? Not recently, but yeah, I have gone through multiple custom hooks. Okay. So which one would you think, uh, you, like any scenario you faced where you thought, okay, custom hook would more more sense? Uh, okay. So in in my current i was uh, doing a story in, in my current company and in that we have to get some information from user in a format of forms and drop downs and then um in the later part of while, while, while we are doing that story we got the requirement from the business that uh, we might use this form in multiple uh, multiple components not only the, this single one mm -hmm. and it has uh, like yeah they were trying to get that component in the multiple tabs or multiple pages so we have created a sing, sing, simple custom hook for that form that we can uh, use that uh, hook whenever we need to access the same amount of form information okay apart from yeah. that we were when we are using we, we were creating a swipe functionality in that as well um for we have created a custom hook in that like if i pass a component in that hook it will be um moved from like uh, left to right or right to left for for sw swiping functionality that is well. okay Got it. <clears throat> so we talked about react but we didn't talk about the virtual dom right so can okay. you explain me that sure so virtual dom is a concept which we use in react it is like whenever any state changes it uh, re-enter the component and the rendering process is uh, heavily resourced uh, it takes a lot of resources 
and if we change a lot of um, states very frequently it will be very hectic for a user to see that a component is rendering or it is like um like we have may we might have some uh, loader while we are entering the component so that user might be uh, might face a ui problem or might face not a better okay so that user might not like like that uh, rendering a lot so virtual dome is is a rescue it is like a uh, blueprint of the current dome which we are using so changing in virtual dome is very easy it doesn't use all the it doesn't use the resources which we have in the browser it's just a copy of our, our virtual dome of our current dome and whenever we change any state it will update on on that virtual dome and then it will compare that 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 uh, I, that user has changed some state it, he has clicked some button or, or made some changes on some state that change state is uh, updated on the virtual dome and now that virtual dome they come like there's a process called reconciliation in that react compares that virtual dom and the actual dom that if they both have the same um, states they it doesn't have any changes it won't render that component but if there is some changes on, on a some specific component on the virtual dom uh, and the actual dom mm -hmm. um, then it will update that component on, on the uh, actual dom so it doesn't update the whole uh, component it just update the component which has been updated with the help of virtual dome okay this whole process is called re reconciliation so this reconciliation thing don't you think it should take more time because it is comparing suppose you have a very complex application yeah. lot of ui is there a lot of state changes are happening you click one checkbox something happened it. so you react has to find out which thing to update but it will keep on comparing from top to bottom, right? The watching, watching, right? Based on that, it will re-render, right? Yeah. So don't you think this comparing on each update will take more time than directly updating? Okay. So it will take time if we don't use the virtual dome because in virtual dome, we are not using the actual resources. The JavaScript engine of the browser that we use for like uh, it created virtual dome and that is very fast and uh, it updates a very uh, fast as compared to use some resources so or resources on, on the browser so updation on the virtual dome is very easy and it doesn't take any resources so updation on, on the virtual dome and then comparing it and updating on the actual dome is way faster than to re-enter complete component on the react page okay because when we re rendering the component on, on a react it, on, on a web page it will take resources it uh, might refresh the images it might refresh all the apis which we have already hit if we are refreshing a component so it will take more time as compared if you are using virtual dom okay. what about immutability uh immutability uh, not sure about this. Like, what, what is the like? What is the reference you want to? What was you asking immutability? So I asked the question like, why virtual DOM is mm -hmm. faster? Mm -hmm. So it is in object that is fine, but still, if you have thousand objects, the complexity will be more. Yeah. And so, it will still be slower, right? At some point, it will still be slower while comparing, right? So that is where this immutability concept comes in. So it just React doesn't compare each one. It just compare the object references because these are just the nodes, right? Yeah. So that's why it's faster. Okay. So let's, can you write one line like, Maybe var str equals to abc, string abc, yeah. And now console.log str0. str0, uh, you want yeah, something yeah. like this. Yeah, so what would print? So we are printing the zeroth index of that str. It will print a. It will print it. Yeah. Okay. So come to the next line. Can you do str of zero? Str of zero. 
equals to x uh, my string x yeah and now again log str zero what it will log it will log uh, when we are using var it takes the reference of that uh, it takes the reference so it will print str zero the first um, index zero a and when we are updating zeroth index with x it will update to xabc and it will print x according run the code yeah a a a second So why did it print A in fourth line? You changed in the third line, right? Yes. But where is a loosely bounded um product, right? So when we update anything on another var, it updates on a global level. Okay. So if we use const, will it fix it? Later const. So if I use const and then update it. Or let. So, like in, in later const, we have a blocked space, so it has a separate memory block when uh, we when we are using it. So, but in the in this case, we are in the same block. We don't have multiple blocks. So, if I use let here. But just let me think why var doesn't update to a var a be updated this thing yeah so basically it won't then as string is immutable right so abc means it will remain abc right so whenever you update it creates a new string. new string yeah but if you do do the same thing for object or array it will work it will update yeah yeah yep. okay 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 yeah yes <clears throat> okay so uh related question so in react how do you update the state like what do you use to update the state set state like set state yeah okay so suppose i have a state in that count is zero and okay. I click the increment button the count increments by one right okay so in order to update the state you would do set state right mm -hmm. of count with the new value okay but uh, why can't i do like state dot count equals to state dot count plus one why can't i directly update because state is just an object right yes so uh I need to do like if you want me to uh, tell you Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Something Maybe like this. Write state equals to object count is to zero. Uh, I mean the curly braces. Yeah. Count is to zero. Double colon zero. Uh, so, yeah. okay. And uh, I want to update this count, right? So I'm saying, why can't I do that state dot count equals to state dot count plus one? Why I need to use set state? Okay, so if I do this, it won't. Uh, it will update that count, but it won't update on the UI. Okay. With the help of set state, it will update that state and it will render that component if there is some changes on, on the data. Okay, any reason why it won't update on the UI? Because we updated the state, right? Ideally, it should mm -hmm. update the UI as well. Okay. So, if we have to update a state without using set state, mm -hmm. then. Yeah, I'm just saying why this doesn't work and set state works. 
because ultimately if you see state is just a plain javascript object right yeah which is updating a state yeah there is nothing react in this mm -hmm. It will fetch that count when it's zero when I'm to one. Yeah. But you are doing this on every click, right? Yeah. That handler is same. Same. And instead of calling set state, I'm wanting okay. this. I think it should work. I haven't tried. Set state. Then. Why we use set state if this is working? Yeah. If this works. Then... I haven't think this through earlier, uh, but yeah, this is a nice question. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, what are the different types of components we can create in React? They didn't get the question. Different types of components, like how? Yeah. So, functional components. Okay, functional class-based components. Yeah. So, how do you decide which component, like which component type to use? So, like in my organization, they have strictly structured us that we have to use uh, only functional type of component. Earlier, everything was on the class based, but now we are uh, strictly using functional based. What are the differences between both? Okay, so um, there are not a lot of differences in class and functional based. Mm -hmm. The major one is like uh, in class base we don't have to uh, like use external hooks. They have already inbuilt functions for uh, rendering component bound no? or, or component bound or should component update. A lot of different um, lifecycle method. But in in functional based we have to use hooks if we have to update anything on, on the on the component. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that. Uh, Apart from that, it's just like a preference for using class uh, functional based. Okay. There is no specific benefits of like there is no specific benefit of using class based or functional based over anyone. So why did your company ask you to not write class based components? Um, because might be functional based is very easy to modify or to like to work on. Because in class based everything is written on the, on the oops level and every um i can say any thing any new functionality or to like to add in class based is quite a little bit difficult as compared to functional okay like if we have to uh, create a state so we have to uh, first create a state then bind it and then use that and update that in class based but in functional we can directly uh, make uh, with the help of use state and we can directly update it okay so your React component is there, which makes some API call mm -hmm. and shows that data on the okay. UI. So, in like, where will you place this API call in your component? Inside the user direct. If it is placing that call whenever I uh, land on that page. Uh -huh. So where will you place? In in the use effect component. Use. Use effect component. Use effect. Yeah. Okay. With the empty um, array, so it will like on the first time when a uh, user enter that page, that will API call uh, like hit and we'll get a response. So what if user clicks on some button and we again want to call that? the component is already mounted. Now we want to refetch the data, I suppose. So we can okay. So um, the one way to do this is well uh, for this there might be some like the way you're saying there is a button in that if a user clicks it it will refresh the data so on that button click we can update some state and use that state as a um, value in dependency area of user effect so whenever a value is changing on on the on that button click it will refresh like it will um, re-enter that user effect component and refresh the data okay 
if you are not using hooks then how would you do, would have done in class space like in class space as well we have to use suppose uh, you are not using any hooks okay then how would you have done in in functional or in class like in class we have all the life cycle methods so we are not have to, we don't have to use we are not using class uh, life cycle methods yeah so which life cycle method would you use to make the api call which life cycle method would uh, would i use um it would be um, get derived state from props static get derived state from uh, i'll use component did mount component did mount yeah okay. because in in that we check that component is mounted or not okay So in component mount, I will place that API call. Okay. Yes. Okay. So coming to the next one. So. How do you do analytics in your application? To so like to track the number of yeah. to tracking information. So uh, they use Snowplow in 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 my company. So we send some um, I can say tracking information on on API. It will log on on the database and they'll use that uh, logging values to track that if a user opens that tab or if a user make a pay try to open a payment page but it, it hasn't made the payment so we uh, track we use tracking information on the snowplow to uh, get all the new projects which we release so coming to this right so can you explain me this prototype in javascript prototype in javascript yeah okay so uh, prototype is a way in that we can access someone else uh, function property in in my component my object so if i have an object in that there is a uh, function written mm -hmm. then i can use that function in my other object we don't i don't have to uh, rewrite that function again and again so if i have a function written on, on an object a then I can use that function from object A to other objects by like using that uh, values. If that function is using one or two values or multiple uh, arguments, then I can pass that argument with the help of prototype. And then uh, I can use that function of the first object into multiple uh, objects. So like why do we need prototype for this i can use call call or apply right right to call the function in uh, my new object context if i just want to borrow the function the bar. why do we need prototype i can use the call or apply and still call the other object function using my current object context okay so like why we use prototype when we have yeah. apply or call apply scenario which you mentioned function reuse mm -hmm. so that can be achieved using call, call apply. apply instead of like apart from borrowing what else prototype do which call and apply doesn't have <laughs> Maybe can you create one example showing the prototype usage? Okay. So I'll create an object person in that. Okay.
फाइव परसेंट टू विच हाज ऑब्जेक्ट नेम फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्ट This prototype of function. So, can you reuse the full name function in person two context using call or apply? So, if I have to use call or apply function, mm -hmm. then like the thing I remember about call and apply is that um, the same we can borrow a function, borrow and function from an object to another object and the way of writing is uh, the first object and then call then from which uh, no no the first the first object needs is this, the object which have the function then proto uh, then call and then uh, we pass the object in which we are in which we are going to use it mm. Can you write that line? According uh, to but it will also say. Person have full name. Call is not a function. I'm not exactly uh, remembering the syntax okay, okay. of call. Uh, call and prototype right now because like I haven't uh, used it from a quite time yeah so they introduced this arrow functions right mm -hmm. so can you explain me what is like why did they introduce arrow functions we already have functions normal functions yeah why they introduced this arrow functions okay so if I have to give an example and okay. let's suppose I have a button in that I have to make some on click on that on click we are doing something okay and if um, with the help of arrow function i can directly make some uh, action with on that button with the help of arrow function okay. and it will be uh, making uh, an arrow function on that click is we can like uh, define that uh, logic inside that button like in, inside the arrow function mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, if we don't have that a function, we would have to use uh, a function call here. So if I have a, a const handle or if I have to use function handle button in that I have done some logic, then I would have to pass this function in, in that component. So it helps us, arrow function help, help us to uh, make our components or make it use 
in, in the interaction or uh, in the event in interaction we can declare that uh, we can define the function inside any uh, event listener with the help of error function so you are saying we can't do with this normal function so like before arrow functions we were writing click handler right yes it was through normal function yeah then so the main uh, problem with this is uh, that if i do this it will um, run every time when a page uh, loads this component but we have to use uh, our function or button click or any handle when we click on it when when a user interact on it so with the help of arrow function we can do that at after a click only after a click that function will call i mean same thing i can achieve with normal function as well right on click is a callback right yeah it, it is not like it will immediately call whenever you click something then it will call your callback function so if it's a arrow function or normal function i mean it should have okay yeah the main difference uh, i knew is uh, in between fun normal function and arrow function is that we can uh, write our code inside any component and in, in inside the event listeners but we can do that as well with the normal function yeah yeah so in your normal code do you use only arrow function uh, arrow okay function? so uh, in arrow function we can make anonymous functions as well we can directly uh, make an anonymous function and i can do that and i can declare my uh, logic here but if i have to use a normal handler instead of arrow function i have to declare a function name can i can i not do inline function using the normal function mm, inline function will also work but anonymous function won't work here so i cannot create an anonymous function uh, inside in syntax you can create but not inside of any an um, event listener so why do you want to create an anonymous function so, anonymous functions are bad right because in your log they don't show so up where we have yeah yeah that's interaction why do you want to like why would they encourage creating anonymous functions for the security concern maybe to then how will you debug yeah. suppose some click handler is not working and it is throwing error but it yeah. which function is it where exactly it is blowing off it might be like uh, just a preference of using arrow function uh, apart from normal function because uh, we use both uh, normal function and arrow function as well so when we are making some event uh, when we make some changes on the events we use arrow functions otherwise we use uh, handles when we have to uh, mix some callback operations mm -hmm. then we use like normal normal function which is written in some part of the code and we are using that as a callback and we are using that okay i can pass normal function uh, via props as well mm -hmm. in in side the components mm -hmm. but arrow function uh, i don't think we can pass okay so let's come to another topic so uh, have you like do you know what is this higher order components yes okay what are they so higher order components are the components in that we are um, 
choosing a function like we are passing a function inside a function or returning a function from a function example um, set timeout set timeout is a higher order function which takes a function and we are having some delay as well in that function and like function inside a function is a called higher order function so like when would you do that like leave aside set timeout mm -hmm. like if when would you create some higher order function suppose you are creating some utility okay suppose like set timeout then when would you think that i want to use higher order function that would make more sense apart from set timeout yeah set timeout is inbuilt right yeah so why did it okay end with this approach right okay so suppose you are creating a utility of a lot of functions okay you see your project is using this type of things a lot you are creating a utility function and you decide okay this should be a higher order function okay so uh, uh i'm giving an example so let's suppose we have a um a list in that we a user can uh, select some products and from that products another person can add any item from that product to a cart then from cart it uh, will like the user will add uh, his address from where, where he want to deliver and then make a payment so every step so from adding the component from a cart to the to the complete payment everything is interlinked so if i have added some element in the cart then the total amount of that cart total values total list i'll need on, on the delivery page that this item needs to deliver this this item needs to deliver on this page so we use uh, higher order functions uh, mostly on those uh, areas or scenarios where every action is uh, dependent on some past action so if i have the list of of the if I have a list of all the comp all the items which a user user going to buy then i can use that component and pass into the next component which is calculating all the prices adding all the delivery charges then after that making well making a payment we are passing that amount that this is the total amount users going to pay from the banking it can be any bank or upi or any cards so when we have uh, this chaining uh, scenarios at that time it makes more sense to use higher order functions mm -hmm. or like when we have to give control of our so like i have added some component added some item on the card and now uh, after making a pay, after adding a card i'll move to the payment section so i'll pass um, my card items to a function in that it will val uh, validate all the uh, items which we have on that card the quant uh, quantity number there might be possibility that i have added some item to the card but after adding it that item is um, sold out okay so the function um, which is going to validate it needs all the information from the last component so we use higher order function on those scenarios okay. apart from set timeouts because it, it helps to make a function asynchronous mm -hmm. anything asynchronous because javascript run on a javascript is a single thread language so with the help of this uh, set timeouts or uh, higher order components we achieve asynchronousity okay and what about closures so closure closure is a way in that uh, we can bind our function with its hierarchical um, properties so uh, if i have a function and in that i'm returning some function and the inside function is using some property from its parents then whenever i use that uh, return function i will i will have that values of of that parent parent hierarchical Direct, direct parent or its above parent values because it is blinded with the function but using closure a lot of closures also a not a good practice because every time we, we use closure it stores some values uh, on 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 that execution and uh, it it might be a object it might be a number of objects it might be a big amount of data 